UFC Fight Night Almeida versus Lewis is coming up in two weeks, guys. We have a little bit of a week off with UFC again, but today I'm going to be going through every fight on the card with timestamps, by the way, if you'd like to skip to any particular part of the video. We're going to get into the fights in just a second, plus a channel announcement. Before we do, though, I do want to say hello, everybody, and welcome back to another video. If you are new here, my name is Kyle. I'm your guy with too many YouTube channels. We'll break down the fights in just a second, but again, if you want to skip, timestamps are there. For those of you who have been following the channel, I know I typically upload on the channel every single day, but this week I will be going going on my honeymoon, so I will be inactive for, like, maybe four to seven days. It's still, like, it's a last-minute kind of trip we're planning here, so I'm unsure exactly when I'll be off, but guys, for the, because I'm a new channel, I know, like, people aren't used to me being here, right? So if you happen to be following the channel, I can't thank you enough for being here. I will be back. Just give me no more than a week. I'll be back. I'll be hard on the grind. We'll be making betting breakdowns, all that type of stuff. Guys, Let's get into the breakdown for today. Starting off with the first fight, we have Daniel Marcos taking on Victor Hugo. Now, it is important to mention, if you guys aren't too familiar with v Victor Hugo, for a guy with the nickname Striker, he is actually a grappler. That is his strength. He is very, very slick on the ground. His striking is okay, but this dude, his whole plan will be to get it to the ground. So this fight is your typical Striker versus Grappler matchup. You have Daniel Marcos, who has amazing, very, very nice, very crisp kickboxing. Everything is technical. Everything looks good. He, so far, has really, really impressed me with his striking. This dude is dangerous. He's 15-0. He looks very good in his prime. But Victor Hugo also seems like he could be could be a contender. I'm not convinced of him yet. And that's the reason why I'm going to be leaning towards Daniel Marcos in this pick. Because from what I've seen, his takedown defense so far has looked really good. And he, does he, it's tough to say whether he fought like a grappler that's as good as Victor Hugo yet. Because Victor Hugo is relatively unproven. He does have a very, very good record. But we haven't seen enough from him against Top Town. Like, he looked very good in the Contender Series, and it is important to note, he is coming off of a very, very quick, <laughs> very quick turnaround, okay? So, Daniel Marcos is going to be the pick. I liked what I've seen from him so far. I'm just not convinced of Victor Hugo. He could be something, he could be something, really a little bit of a problem in the division, but Daniel Marcos, his hands, his striking is very, very crisp, and I've been very impressed from him from what I've seen. Give me Marcos for the first pick of the night. Moving on to the next fight. This one's very interesting because we have Cal Fernandez taking on Mark Dicasi. Now, I have watched Cal Fernandez, and I'm not sure I'm pronouncing his name right. My apologies. This guy, if you guys don't know on the channel, I am a big, big fan of the LFA. It is a great organization, very, very underrated. So, Cal is coming out of the LFA, and he has looked absolutely fantastic, especially in his last two fights. He's 8-1 with his only loss coming fairly recently, but then... He bounced back and had two amazing, amazing KOs, both with kicks, which are very nice. One to the body, one to the head. This dude is very dangerous on the feet. I like what I've seen from him. However, of course, he has not fought anybody even close to the level of the guys that Mark Dicasi fought because Mark Dicasi has fought the who's who. Well, not necessarily the who's who, but he's fought like really tough guys. Like, take a look at his last five here. He's take, He has fought Rafael Alves, Vyacheslav Borshev, Damir Hazovic, Michael Johnson, and Joel Alvarez. Those guys are very, very good fighters in combined. Like, his 16-7 and seven record is unfortunate because he's an... He, I don't want to say he's, he's a good fighter, but like, he's like... At lightweight especially, he takes on such tough guys. He's just an okay fighter that's been sitting outside the rankings. Does that make sense? He has a little bit of everything in his game. He has nice power. He has decent stand-up. You know, he can do just a little bit of everything, but he's never really been able to get a good win streak going on the division. So, it's tough because... We saw him a couple months ago, and in this fight, he he looked okay. The fight was decently scrappy, and he just lost to somebody in this fight who was the superior striker, and that really, really worries me because I can very well see the same kind of thing happening where he's just a little bit of a step behind. Now, you could argue in this last fight, this is why I'm talking about it in particular, is because you could argue like the headbutt in this fight ended up leading Joel, or excuse me, Mark Dicasi to getting to the ground, and he ended up losing by submission, but... He was losing the fight the whole time anyways. I don't really think that matters. The point is, like, he's coming off of a loss that has a little bit of controversy behind it. I just like the stand-up from what I've seen for Count Fernandez. I can't imagine that Mark Dicasi would come in with the game plan to wrestle. It's really tough to say with him what he's going to come in with, but if this fight remains on the feet, I really like the stand-up that I've seen for Fernandez. He has very, very dangerous kicks. I'm very excited to see what he can possibly do in the UFC because he had some nice success in LFA, so... I'm going to pick Cal Fernandez, but I need to see more from him against top talent. Not, I'm not like, if he gets past Mark Dicasi, I'll be really looking at this guy. That's the thing. So for now, the pick's going to be Fernandez, but with a little bit of reluctancy. Moving on to the next fight, guys. I am so excited for this fight. I am hyped to see this one. It's Lucas Alexander taking on David Onama. Now, first of all, I love watching both of these guys fight. I am particularly a little bit of a bigger fan of David Onama. This dude is always Always putting his heart in the game. It is so exciting to watch. And these two coming together and banging. 
Long story short, I'm not confident in what's going to happen in this fight, okay? Lucas Alexander, we've only seen him against top talent a couple times, okay? First, he lost to Joe Anderson Brito by submission. Now, there is no shame in losing to Joe Anderson Brito, in my opinion. That was uh, that loss has aged quite well. And then he bounced back with a very, very nice, very dominant win against Steven Peterson. Now, take, make of that what you will, because Steven Peterson was basically... <laughs> I mean, Steven Peterson retired after that. You know, like, Steven Peterson wasn't at anywhere near the level of Lucas Alexander at this point in his career, okay? So, the point is, we need to see him again, and I need to really pay attention because if this guy takes on David Onama and beats him dominantly like he did Steven Peterson, maybe Lucas Alexander could be the real deal in the UFC. But, this dude has a very, very nice stand-up. He has amazing combinations, switches stances beautifully. He's always attacking something different. I'm very impressed from what I've seen in his striking. His cardio is excellent, but... I will note, the ground game is a little bit of a weakness. He has lost by submission in the past, and I do want to say all of his losses are by submission. I'm not 100% on that, but regardless, this dude has one weakness, and that is the BJJ game, but everything else is excellent on his end. But I guess that's like a little bit of a huge hole to have in your game, right? So he's taking on David Onama. David Onama, we have seen many, many times in the UFC now. He's had some ups. He's had some downs. He has fought very, very good fighters, in my opinion, and he's shown that he can go to war. He can go to war and come out on top. You know, he is a very, very good fighter. He's coming off of an amazing KO against Gabriel Santos. Now, here's the problem, because I would imagine both guys will come in looking to strike in this matchup. David Onama isn't exactly a wrestler, okay? He does have a ground game, and he could utilize that against Lucas Alexander. However, I'm not confident that he will end up doing that. Lucas Alexander will probably have a huge advantage in speed and cardio, but David Onama has power. We haven't seen Lucas Alexander really in trouble or fought a guy with the power that David Onama possesses. So David Onama is a guy that you really cannot count out, okay? Because you could be beating on him. Like, let's say Lucas Alexander is doing what he does, you know? He's, he's throwing great combinations, being very elusive, looking real good. But then David Onama, bang, one shot power. He has that potential, but he also has a skill set to back that up. I believe this will be a close fight. And I'm not entirely sure who's going to win this fight. I'm going to pick David Onama just because I need to see more from Lucas Alexander. But I could very well see Lucas Alexander coming in and doing what he has been this entire time. Plus, David Onama has had gas tank issues in the past. Maybe Lucas Alexander with his great cardio could outdo David Onama in that sense. But I just can never count out David Onama from a fight, man. That's the problem, you know? So, give me David Onama for the pick. That is a very, very low confidence pick. But... I will pick him for the video. Moving on to the next fight, guys. I'm not going to lie to you. This is going to be a quick breakdown. I'm not going to spend much time on it. We have Montserrat Conjo Ruiz taking on Eduarda Mura. Now, Eduarda Mura, she's an okay fighter. She's looked okay from what we've seen so far. She's a 9-0 record, but she has lacked the talent that she fought. But then again, coming into the WMA UFC strawweight division, that's not exactly saying much of like the level of difference talent. It's not like coming into the strawweight division of the, well, the UFC doesn't have one. If they had one, you get the point. <laughs> she is honestly an okay all-around fighter. She specializes on the ground. She has looked okay from any highlights that you've seen. She's coming off the contender series with a very nice submission win. Looking good. She's going to be outsizing Ruiz. Now, I'm not, I don't even want to go through Montserrat's record. This girl cannot fight. She sucks. She is one of the worst fighters in the UFC. When saying that, I feel bad. I don't mean to be disrespectful, but she can't do anything good. A girl that's in her prime, a girl that's so undersized in the division, she sucks. She sucks. I'm picking Eduardo Mora, and that is a very confident pick of mine, okay? I don't care who else was across the cage from her. I can't believe that Ruiz has a UFC win. That's shocking to me. You know, like, this girl does nothing well. Eduardo Mora is going to ragdoll her and win however she would like. Moving on to the next fight, guys. I'm actually a little bit excited for this one. We have Angela Hill taking on Denise Gomez. Now, Denise Gomez looks like she can be a big problem in the strawweight division. Let me start with her. We've seen quite a bit of her now. She is a girl that has, possesses very nice power, very nice striking. And you know what? Like, I'm pretty confident in her that one day she will end up in the, to the top of the division. I really do feel that way. We really took notice from her in this KO against Bruno Brazil. Looked amazing. And then looked even better against Yorgui. Like, she is awesome for the division in the strawweight division. I believe this girl will be a problem. Her power is very, very real. She's taken on Angela Hill, one of the OGs of the strawweight division. Angela Hill. Okay. I'm mad at Angela Hill, but I'm not really. No, not really. Okay. So she has had an up and down career. As you can see, 15 and 13. She's always been a gatekeeper of the UFC, right? She does everything okay, but sometimes she ends up finding a win. Sometimes she doesn't. She's just an okay fighter, Angela Overkill Kill. Overkill Hill, excuse me. But Ah, uh, it's tough to say because once she beat Lupa de Godinez, and I understand that these two fights, like, she hasn't fought exactly the next level talent, 
I thought that Angela Hill was actually making some progress in her career. I thought she was really changing. Like, she really impressed me with these two wins. And again, looking back on it, yeah, you know what? It was against bad competition, okay? I knew that at the time, and I was still like, okay, I don't know. Something about Angela Hill just impressed me with these two fights. Like, I was impressed in this one. I was even more impressed in this one. And then I was like, guys, I think she's going to beat Mackenzie Dern. I really do. But then Angela Hill, in classic Angela Hill fashion, let me down, showed her record, is exactly the same, and she happened to just get two nice wins. So, Angela Hill, I'm looking at her the same as I did back a couple of years ago. She's 15 and 13. The thing is, she hasn't a good chin, okay? But I'm still picking Denise Gomez, man. I'm picking Denise Gomez. I think she's going to steamroll Angela Hill. She is a wrecking ball in the division, and I think she's going to go forward and pound Angela Hill. And I don't know if she'll find a finish. That's a tough thing. Regardless, I'm picking Denise Gomez. I think she is the superior striker. She's younger. She's going to look good. She has all the hunger in the world right now. She looks like she's actually scaring the division. You don't say it often about 115-pound fighters. So... Give me Denise Gomez. That is my pick. Moving on to the next fight, we have Elizio Zalecki Dos Santos taking on Renat Fakradinov. Now, guys, I am also very excited for this fight. Very, very excited. I'm excited to see Renat back in the cage. Okay, guys, Renat Fakradinov. I am officially convinced that this guy is a contender. I'm not convinced he's the real deal. I'm not convinced he's championship material yet. But, man, is this guy dangerous. Coming to the UFC, he already looked dangerous, okay? Everybody was, like, really hyped up about him, myself included. I was like, this dude, I cannot wait to see what he does. He was actually, like, kind of matching what we've seen from Shara, uh, Shara Butin Mega, Mega, Shara Butin Magomedov, excuse me there. Kind of, like, the same level of hype where it's, like, one of those guys coming in that a lot of people were really paying attention to. So, he's lived up to it so far. He has had three great wins coming into the UFC. This one, in particular, against Brian Battle, he dominated Brian Battle, and look what Brian Battle has gone on to do. Brian Battle is a fantastic fighter. He had nothing for Renat Fakradinov, and then he stormed forward and destroyed Kevin Lee. Now, it's Kevin Lee past his prime. It's Kevin Lee is not the same fighter that he once was, but still, this dude is dangerous. He can do everything. He can wrestle. He can strike. He's powerful. This dude lives up to the name Gladiator. He's taking on Elizu Zalecki, who is a great fighter in himself, okay? He's aging now. He's 36. He, we used to look at this guy like he could have been a title contender, but now we've seen him get a couple losses. We've seen him age. He just doesn't exactly look the same. He's had his ups and downs in the UFC, of course. He's fought very, very good opponents. You have a split decision against Muslim Salikov, which could have gone either way. Another thing that's important to note that I didn't mention is he has been quite inactive. That's the problem. Now, we've clearly seen him age at this point in his career, right? He got a great win against Benoit Saint-Denis, which is aged very well. But this fight, I'm mad at this fight. Abubakar Nurmagomedov, this was a complete robbery. And his age showed in this fight. He couldn't keep up with a subpar Abubakar Nurmagomedov, who didn't look good himself. And I don't know how he possibly got this win. It was a complete robbery. He was aging in this fight. He's looking like he's finally getting old. That's my point. He still does have a very nice all-round game. He has the power to finish anybody. But he's taken a guy, when Renat Fakradinov, who's in his prime and has done nothing but looked fantastic in his career so far. I have no reason to pick against him. When you're fighting Zaleski, excuse me, there is a, a possibility where he can always catch you, okay? That possibility is always there. But in my opinion, Renat's going to steamroll him. Renat is the real deal. I'm convinced of this guy. And I think that until he fights one of the absolute greats in the division, I'm not going to question him. Give me Renat Fakrdi enough to get this win. Moving on to the next fight, we have Elvis Brenner taking on Esteban Rebovics. Now, this fight's a little bit difficult to break down because I both fighters have shown... Excuse me, I just kicked something down there. Both fighters have shown that they've been okay fighters, especially Brenner as of recently. He has really proved some doubters wrong. He's put together a nice little four-fight win streak, and he's looked quite good doing it. Coming into the UFC, he had a little bit of a tough decision against Tukhanov. Now, I don't remember whether or not I thought he won this fight. Regardless, it was a very, very close fight in my opinion, and then he shocked the world against Gruam Kutuladze. I was so, so sure, like the rest of the world, that Gruam was going to kill this guy, okay? Brenner, while he did have some trouble in the fight, he rose to the occasion, ended up getting a late finish. This dude is very underrated. He could be the real deal in this fight. He's taking on Esteban Rebovic. So, he is also, it's tough to say because like both these fighters, I don't exactly know where they sit in the division yet. He has had some nice wins, but of course, with his first fight in the UFC being a decision loss, he came back with a very nice win against Kamala Kirk. Now, that's the thing. That's the thing. Both fighters have looked okay. They've risen to the occasion. Both fighters have shown a little bit of an all-round skill set. Brenner prop Brenner has jiu-jitsu credentials, but we don't really see it from him. He's definitely shown that he has power. He's definitely shown that he has heart. And same for Rebovic, though. So, I'm not going to lie to you guys. This one's a bit of a 50-50 fight, in my opinion. I really don't know who to pick. <sighs> I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. Like, I could see, like, 
both guys are kind of like okay fighters everywhere. Brenner rose the occasion recently. Brenner, Brenner definitely has a better resume right now, but Rebo Vix, he can't count out. Like, this dude's good too. So, I don't know, man. Complete 50-50 fight. Just for the video, I'm going to pick Rebovix, but I'm not I'm not sure at all who's going to win this fight. Moving on to the next fight, we have Vitor Petrino taking on Modestas Bacalcus. Now, this is a very interesting fight because we have Vitor Petrino, who has looked good. He's looked very good so far. He's 9-0 when this dude is big, this dude is powerful, this dude can crack, and this dude can grapple. He looks like he could be a problem. At light heavyweight, he's had a perfect resume so far with very little, what do you call it, like uh, any any opposition right now coming in. Like, he's looked good since he came into the UFC. He ended up having to grapple in his last fight, but still looked good doing so. Like, this dude is big. This dude is powerful. He's taken on Modestas Bacalcas, who has looked good. He's looked good. Like I said, he recently he has a four-fight win streak returning to the UFC. He's looked good against Tyson Pedro. But then we have the Zach Palgo win. This fight was a complete robbery. Complete robbery. 100%. The fight in the first round, it was back and forth. Okay, they were looking okay. Now, Modestas ended up landing way less in this fight, but he was very, very powerful, and it was it was really showing in this fight, okay? After the first round, he was gassing. He was sloppy. He was eating a lot of shots. He was getting rocked in this fight. Any other heavyweight that was not Zach Palga, excuse me, my phone was ringing there, any other heavyweight that was not named Zach Palga would have finished him in this fight. And that left a really bad taste in my mouth. That really, really did because he showed me that a guy that can come in like v v Vitor Petrino can crack him and this guy will actually go for the finish. The last performance with Modestus Bacalcus, to be honest with you, is the entire reason why I'm going to pick Vitor Petrino in this fight. I cannot believe the performance I saw from him last time. That was a complete robbery. He didn't look good. At all. If he shows up like that, Vitor is going to steamroll this guy. So give me Vitor Petrino. I can only imagine that he's going to show up like he did. And, like, taking a look at the rest of Bacalcus's record, he hasn't been in the UFC. He lost a long time ago to Khalil Roundtree, but then he came back. He got a win against Tyson Pedro, but even then you could argue that Pedro's a little bit overrated. Then you had a horrible performance against Zach Palga. I'm not picking him. I'm not picking him. Give me Vitor Petrito win this fight. Sorry to pause the video on you guys, but I do need to promote the channel membership that we have going on. Guys, if you're interested in seeing my official plays every single week, every single event, consider joining the channel membership. It's Canadian, just $2. It's, you know, probably cheaper for the rest of the world because of our great Canadian dollar. You know what I mean? So if you're interested in seeing what my bets are going to be every single week, and I do bet on every single UFC card, I am very interested in playing it as safe as possible. Typically, I, I can't remember the last time I didn't bring in a profit, to be honest with you. So if you're interested in seeing my plays, join the channel membership every single Thursday or Friday. I will be posting in the community post. But of course, since there's no UFC, there's probably not going to be any bets. If I do end up touching the LFA event, then you know what? Maybe. But regardless, look out for it. If you're interested, channel membership's there. Regardless, I appreciate you being here. Let's get into the main card. Moving on to the next fight, we have Kyle Barajo taking on Abus Magomedov. Now, <laughs> I'm embarrassed that I picked Abus Magomedov to beat Sean Strickland. This dude, who knew that he had such a bad cardio issue? Who knew, right? This dude looked great. <laughs> this dude had some nice, very nice highlights. He's looked great in quite a few fights. He looked great in his first UFC fight. But then, Sean Strickland just completely exposed this guy. This dude, gas tank issue. Big time. Big time gas tank issue. But he's a dangerous striker. Has some very nice power to him. Problem is... You know, <laughs> bad, bad cardio. This dude completely crumbled to Sean Strickland. Now, Kyle Brawl has looked great in his UFC career so far. He had a little bit like, he's had a little bit of tough fights recently, but he's coming off of quite the fantastic win last time around. Now, it's really tough to say with Kyle Brawl because he's a very strong grappler. So this is going to be a tip. This is probably going to be a grappler versus striker matchup. But I would imagine from what we've seen from Kyo so far, Kyo is just going to take him down. He's going to work him and Abus is going to gas. I can only assume that you're as good as your last performance. For the most part, I understand there's an exception to that rule. But still, at the same time, I think Kyo will be able to get him down. If Sean Strickland can knock you down, get you down, I have no issue in seeing Kyo being able to do the same thing. Give me Kyo Brow for this fight. It's a very easy pick in my opinion. I'm just embarrassed that I picked Mago, uh, or excuse me, Abus Mago Madoff in his last performance. I'm so embarrassed by that. Moving on to the next fight, we have Ismail Bonfim taking on Vince Pichel. Vince from Hell Pichel. We haven't seen very much activity from Vince in a very long time, but Vince, he's 40 years old now. That's a big issue. That's a big issue, especially in the lightweight division. He has been very inactive pretty much like the last many years, however long he's been in the UFC. He's been in the UFC for a long time, but this dude, he's a pretty nice striker. He's okay. He's very powerful, uses his kicks very nicely. Always has forward pressure. Looks pretty good. So he's had his fair share of losses. But of course, he had a little bit of a win streak. But then again, like those wins, 
are three and two years ago. The most recent one being over a year ago against Mark Madsen. Then, yeah, you know what? That was a close fight, but still, he did lose that fight. So, Vince, it's tough to say, man. He's coming in at 40 years old, and that's a big issue in my opinion. Ismail Bonfim. I'm a big fan of the Bonfim brothers. I'm very high on the Bonfim brothers. Brothers, I've watched this dude in LFA. He looked fantastic in LFA coming to the UFC the Contender Series. He looked great in the Contender Series. Then destroyed Terrence McKinney. Then we have the Benoit Saint Denis fight. Now I know Benoit Saint Denis has been proven to be quite the problem in the lightweight division, but I was so disappointed in Bonfim in this performance. He did nothing, nothing but eat body kicks and try to brawl. Instead, and this this honestly because this is the first time in recent time, recent memory that we've seen him lose. Instead of adjusting or defending to whatever he was being thrown at, he was taunting. He was taunting Benoit. Eventually, he ended up getting taken down, and he did show good defense on the ground, but he ended up getting choked out. Like, I did not like the way that he handled adversity. I didn't like it. It was horrible, horrible attitude. He needs to fix that, okay? I'm no longer on the Ismail Bonfim hype train, just this brother specifically. I'm no longer on the hype train. However, this dude is very technical. He's very all-rounded, has some nice power to him. He is a very good fighter, okay? And I believe that he is going to take out the 40-year-old inactive Vince Pichel. Pichel pretty much just has his pressure and his kicks in his game. And I think Ismail Bonfim will have no problem really utilizing the rest of the game to get a wonderful win over him. However, I don't like what I've seen from him the last fight, the way that he dealt with adversity. As soon as he started losing, as soon as good shots came, he's just like, coming at like instead of adjusting and defending that's not good if he handles adversity that way he's going to run into huge problems in the lightweight division as soon as he takes on somebody that is relatively relatively i guess you could say relevant in the division <laughs> i'm going to be picking against him i don't like the way he handled that but i think he has enough skill set and i believe he is good enough to beat a guy in vince pichella give me ismail bonfim for this win i'm fairly confident in saying so but what happens again if he ends up having some adversity. Who knows? I don't like the way he handled it, but I'm, I think he's going to win this fight. Give me Ismail Bonfim. Moving on to the next fight, we have Rodolfo Vieira taking on Armin Petrosian. Now, for this fight, I'm very interested in seeing Armin Petrosian fight because I was really impressed with his last fight, okay? Armin Petrosian, since coming to the UFC, has been fed dogs. This dude has been fighting very, very good fighters with one hiccup along the way, but still, take a look at this. Take a look at the record he's had so far. He lost to Kyle Brawl, which was a very tough fight, and Kyle ended up being a very, very strong contender. But then he bounced back with two very nice wins, and he successfully completely derailed the hype train. That is Christian Leroy Duncan, but that's not even necessarily a hype train, okay? That's not even necessarily a hype train at all. Christian Leroy Duncan is a very good striker. Now, this, in my opinion, was a very tough fight, but it was a good showing for Armin Petrosian. He was able to get the better of most exchanges to a, ever, to a fighter that everyone believed was going to be like a Michael Venom Page type fighter. You know what I mean? He showed great eye fight IQ, got the better of most exchanges. I am very high on him after this, after this last win. I was extremely impressed. Now, Rodolfo Vieira, he, we've seen him for a long time now, Rodolfo Vieira. However, he's been like, he hasn't had a ton of fights. He's had, you can see his record is a win-loss, win-loss type thing, right? He, every time he fights somebody that's okay, he lost like Chris Curtis and Anthony Hernandez both beat him, okay? So th that's a tough part, and I was not impressed at all with his win against Cody Brundage. He struggled with Cody Brundage, and Cody Brundage is one of the worst fighters to ever grace the UFC octagon. Even gracing is a way to say that, you know what I mean? I don't like what I've seen from him. I don't like what I've seen from him recently. He does bring a very, very strong jiu-jitsu game. He is great there, but I just love the defense I've seen from Petrosian. I love the fight I keep from Petrosian. I'm pretty confident that Petrosian will get the win here. I really like him. Rodolfo Vieira is out of his prime now, and I would imagine like jiu-jitsu is the only thing he's going to offer Petrosian here against Petrosian, who is a very good kickboxer with a decent ground game to back it up. I'm going to pick Armin Petrosian in this fight. I'm very confident in saying so. Moving on to the next fight, we have Rodrigo Nascimento taking on Dantel Mays. Now, R Rodrigo Nascimento, I'm not entirely sure what to make of him yet because he has a very good record. However, like, he has a decent all-round game. He can do a little bit of everything, but nothing really screams impressive to me. You know what I mean? But he could very well be something in the heavyweight division because uh, I would say it's a little bit of a lack of talent. You know what I mean? So we've seen him for a little bit now. He has looked okay in the UFC, but as of recent, this last year, he has been really cutting it close with, uh, excuse me, Elier Latifi and Tanner Bozer. Both split decisions, very tough fights. This one I was sweating in because I bet on Latifi. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, oh my god, this fight's so close, and then Nascimento ended up getting the win. However, it is important to note that three years ago, he did fight Dante Mays, and Dante Mays ended up losing by submission. Now, Dante Mays, Lord Kong, Lord Kong Dante Mays, 10-5, and five. I'm shocked that he has 10 wins, okay? This dude sucks. 
This dude, I don't like him. I, I mean, I don't dislike him as a person. I mean, I don't like him as a fighter. All he has is power to him. I was shocked at his performance against Augusto Sakai. It was horrible, that performance. And then he bounced back with a win against Andre Orlovsky. So he actually threw in this fight. He's a very inactive striker. All he has was one giant Kong power shot. His nickname is Lord Kong. He has the Kong power shot. That's all that he has. So even in this Orlovsky fight, though, it was a little bit back and forth until Dontel Mays just landed his big power shot. I am just completely unimpressed by this guy. He just relies on his power. He's a heavyweight in that way. I'm picking Rodrigo Nascimento to win this fight, although I'm not confident in saying that because Dontel Mays has that fight-changing power. He can do everything. You know I mean? Like, he can, it, it, no matter what you're doing to him, I meant to say, he can just change the fight with one shot. You could be doing anything and everything to this guy. Dontel Mays has that Derek Lewis effect. He has the power. It's always present. But I got to go with the better fighter, the clearly better fighter in Rodrigo Nascimento. Give me Nascimento to get this win. Moving on to the co-main event, we have Gabriel Bonfim taking on Nicholas Dalby. Now, Gabriel Bonfim, arguably the better of the two Bonfim brothers. Now, I'm, you know what? Okay, because we still haven't seen Bonfim really have any adversity in his fights. I'm a little bit worried that he's going to be like his brother. You know, I mentioned his brother has handled adversity horribly. I'm like, now I'm thinking like, what if his brother's the same kind of way? Because I mean, you could like, you could assume that brothers are similar, but I can't assume because they are different fighters. Gabriel Bonfim, man, 15-0, came out of the LFA just like his brother coming to the UFC. This dude looks so impressive. He can do everything. Very patient, very technical, amazing, amazing fighter. Very high on this guy. He's taking on Nicholas Stabley, who also has a very nice all-round skill set. This dude has been flying under the radar, to be honest with you. He's been flying under the radar. He has a 22-4 and record, and he's been in the UFC for quite some time now. He has put together quite the three-fight win streak. I will say, though, it's against competition besides maybe Muslim Salikov. It's against subpar competition, but Gabriel Bonfim also hasn't necessarily really faced a Nicholas Dalby. You know what I mean? So that's why it's really tough. So both fighters are good fighters. I'm more impressed by Bonfim. I think he has a very solid all-round skill set. Not to say that Dalby doesn't. It's just Bonfim... Is a little bit more crisper. He's 26 years old, getting better every single time we see him. Taking on the 38 and aging Nicholas Dalby. I got to go with Gabriel Bonfim in this fight. I'm just, again, I'm just so impressed from what I've seen from him. So I think he's going to win the fight. Give me Gabriel Bonfim. And moving on to the main event, we have Jailton Almeida taking on Derek Lewis. I'm disappointed, man. I'm disappointed in this fight because I really wanted to see the grappling exchanges between Jailton Almeida and Curtis Blades. Important note, Derek Lewis taking this fight on short notice. I'm not going to lie to you guys. There's not much to break down here. Derek Lewis, you know what comes with him. He's a very sloppy fighter. All he has is power. He has had a horrible losing streak, but then came in all of a sudden and just destroyed DeLima with a flying knee. I was like, that's nuts, okay? I can't believe that he won. That. Well, I can believe he won that fight because it's just the Derek Lewis way. <laughs> He's taking on Jailton Almeida, who looks like an actual heavyweight with actual skill. This dude is dangerous on the ground. He's powerful. He He's really good, okay? He's really good at what he does. He takes you to the ground. He beats you up. He finds a submission. Whatever it comes, comes. He's had a perfect run since he came to heavyweight. This dude is an animal. This dude's an absolute animal and really proved himself against Rosenstruck just four months ago, okay? It's tough because you have Jailton Almeida, who has all the skill, and he's clearly the better fighter. But then you have Derek Lewis. No matter what you're doing to Derek Lewis, the one shot can change anything. We've seen it time and time again from Derek Lewis. That's why you can never count him out. <laughs> It's like that's there's nothing to break down in a Derek Lewis fight. There's nothing to break down because it's like, oh, Derek Lewis is fighting somebody who's way better than him everywhere, but Derek Lewis has the fight changing power. <laughs> that's like, I don't know what to, <laughs> what am I supposed to break down here? That's the thing. Derek Lewis definitely hasn't looked like himself, but here's the thing: you have Jailton Almeida, who is so good at taking you down, controlling you, but Derek Lewis has the Derek Lewis just get up. I'm done on the ground. I'm just going to stand up. He's that big. He's that strong. He's that hard to control. It's tough, man. So Jelton Almeida should win this fight. Jelton Almeida is the better fight. Stand up on the ground, whatever it may be, cardio, whatever aspect of the fight you have, Jelton Almeida is miles ahead of Derek Lewis. But Derek Lewis always has that chance. Look at Curtis Blades. Look at Volkov. We've seen it time and time again. He can just hit you. He can knock you out. That's <laughs> that's why it's tough to pick. I can see Derek Lewis catching him. But give me Jailton Almeida. He should win this fight because he is the better fighter. But Derek Lewis can always change a fight. Give me Jailton Almeida. 
to win this fight. Guys, that is going to do it for the UFC Fight Night card. Thank you so much for watching. Let me know what you thought of my picks down below. I would love to hear your thoughts in the comment section. If there's anything you disagreed with me in particular, let me know, guys. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you so much for watching the video on the screen right now. You'll have two videos from the Clembat channel. If you'd like to check them out, I will see you either there or in the next video, guys. Take care.